All right, YouTube, this is Kelvin. And in uh, continuing my uh, coverage of uh, Ferruja at Tata Steel, uh, or VKNZ, um, I have now a game for you from round three. Uh, and it is Alareza Ferruja uh, as the white pieces uh, representing Iran against uh, Vladislav Artemiev uh, with the black pieces of Russia. Uh, and so, like I said before, these, uh, these playthroughs or moderate speed, um, and it's just kind of, you know, giving you guys a chance to just see through the game um, at a pretty good pace, and, uh, you know, I just give, you know, a little bit of light commentary here and there, uh, but it's it's not a full analysis of the game, um, so you notice it'll be a little shorter than some of the, you know, full analysis and stuff, you know, 15, 20 minutes and stuff like that, so I just like to kind of give you guys a little bit of my thoughts, you know, while the game is playing, and uh, just, you know, there's, you know, a couple little points of the, you know, game and stuff that, you know, there might be a certain concept or something like that that I think will do you guys some, some good. Or just maybe it might be interesting for you guys to know. All right, so if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and take a look at this game here. All right, so we have an E4 opening, C6. So we have the Carol Khan, D4, D5, all pretty standard stuff. All right, so now we have the uh, advanced variation of the Carol Khan. And this is actually going to be the highest played uh, Carol Khan variation in the database. And uh, so, you know, H4 is kind of like a little, little little trick. It's not, you know, it's not going to uh, affect anybody that's at the, you know, intermediate to higher levels because, you know, they, they see through the... Uh, they see through the little trap that you're trying to set there with H4, trying to trap the bishop. So we got knight G3... And uh, you, now you guys see the uh, the point of, uh, you know, either h6 or h5, you know, being able to give that queen some, or give that uh, bishop some space to back up all the way and not be trapped. Now, you guys notice this queen is on b6, and uh, it's attacking that b2 pawn. And for those of you that are wondering, it is actually a free pawn. It's not a, there aren't any tactics or there aren't any tricks uh, to take in that pawn, uh, literally, if uh, Artemiev wanted to, he could just take that pawn off the board and he's just up a clear pawn. Uh, generally, you know, when you have uh, a situation where your, you know, your queen is attacking the B B7 pawn or the B2 pawn, um, there are a lot of, uh, it ends up really being like a poison pawn. You know, there are a lot of tactics involved and uh, you can very easily get your queen trapped. So, you know, you always want to, you know, um, Think very hard before you, you know, you go into those types of variations because that's definitely not something you want to do. Lose your queen. Now, if we kind of back up to move 15, uh, we saw queen d8 on the board, and that's actually the first, uh, the first that that's ever been seen. Um, that is the uh, that's a brand new variation um, as of earlier in 2020. All right, so we're we're even in the pawn count back up here. I'm gonna go ahead and trade rooks. You notice uh, Feruja has his rook on the open file. And, uh, you know, Black has a little bit of work to do with his rook to try to put it on, you know, some type of, you know, good good square. Trying to set up a little discovery discovery uh, check here. Just uh, moving the queen around, trying to get her into a, to a good, uh, good square. And so you notice here with uh, queen e3, we're, we're threatening checkmate in one on d8. So, you know, you have to defend against that. And so the, the meaning of moving queen to e3, or queen to e4, actually, um, is trying to free up for a rook lift. You know, you'll have the you know, have the rook come up here and swing over. And so that's uh, it's trying to set up for that to, that to happen here. So you got a block. And this is something you guys will actually see a lot of in like tactics training and stuff like that. When you bring the queen up next to uh, the rook uh, with the, your other rook right there. And so you see the meaning of uh, backing the bishop up to c2. Um, you know, there's a there's a nice little little tactic here. Uh, forcing the queen away from the protection of the... Uh, you're basically deflecting the king away from the protection of that knight. So now you see that, uh, that Ferruja is actually up an entire piece. Now he's down a couple of pawns, but... You know, whenever you have an extra piece, uh, you know, you definitely have some good compensation. As you can tell, you know, for um, Artemiev's king is, is is really, really in the, out in the open. So even despite the fact that Ferruja has, uh, you know, an extra piece, you know, the king is uh, just wide open. 
All right, so we're getting into an in-game. And like I said before in, in my other playthrough, um, anytime you're up material, you definitely want to trade down. Trades are going to benefit you. Uh, and at the at the conversely, um, you know, it's 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 not helping Artemiev to, to, you know, trade, you know, because now you see that he doesn't have any any major or minor pieces left. And uh, he's just trying to play his pawns against uh, Faruja's bishop. And so Faruja, you know, he wants to, to break apart the pawn structure. So that way this pawn here on, uh, you know, h4 is a little easier to get to. And uh, not defended. And so uh, Artemiev's best hope is to try to, you know, uh, create some type of a pass pawn or queening, queening possibility with his pawns on the queen side. Once the game is done, I'll actually back up and, and just kind of show like a little side variation of of something you guys might be thinking in this particular position. And so you're just basically seeing the bishop being able to, you know, control these pawns here because there there really isn't a good way for you to push them to try to, you know, queen. And uh, so you guys notice here that, you know, this pawn is, uh, this pawn on g6, is, there's not really a way, there's not really a way to stop it from queening. And uh, so, like I said before, if I back up here just a touch, in one of my previous videos, I mentioned, I mentioned this move here, you know, to try to freeze these two pawns. Now, if you notice in this particular situation, it doesn't quite work. Number one, because the king is in a pretty, you know, in a pretty good position to, you know, try to defend against whatever. Um, and uh, well, the exception for this pawn, of course. But um, if we just take it through, like let's say, like a little light variation here. And we go ahead and try to, you know, prevent these pawns from moving. Um, you actually have this move here. Now, what this move does is uh, it basically uh, either forces the, uh, you know, either for you to leave it alone and for you to be able to, you know, capture here. And then there's not a good way to prevent this pawn from queening because, you know, you can't put the bishop here. And I mean, of course, putting the bishop here doesn't really do anything. And, uh, you know, if you were to take, it would pretty much be the same idea, just kind of in a different way. And so, like I said before, there's not, you know, you can't come here with the bishop, you know, even if you were to try to do something like this to attack this pawn and get down. I mean, there's, there's just king here. Let me get this here. And then that protects the, the check. Cause you know, of course, before, if you were to, uh, you know, push pawn here, that would automatically be a, a take, you know, a take with check. And then you would win the pawn, and then that would just be a completely winning game. So that's just kind of like a little, little sample variation here. I'll just uh, actually, yeah. just showing that little structure again, just just to kind of refresh you guys' memory on uh, let's see the possibilities here or here. Yeah. So just to kind of refresh you guys' memory on something I mentioned before, um, as far as like you know a certain type of in-game, uh, you know tactics and techniques and. You know stuff like that and that's one of the things that really makes a difference between you know your your beginner and intermediate player and your you know the, the the guys on these levels you know their their ability to be able to you know turn you know a situation into a win uh that looks drawish or you know even to save uh, a losing position by you know understanding how to draw in those types of positions and stuff like that but yeah that's the uh the round three uh for um you know, Al Alareza Faruja and uh, Vladislav Artemiev. And uh, go ahead and subscribe and like, guys. And if there uh, are any other videos um, from the 2020 VKNZ uh, Tata Steel or the 2020 Norway Chess that I'm currently covering right now that you'd like for me to do like a little playthrough on and, you know, a little light analysis, go ahead and, uh, you know, either comment or, you know, just just let me know. And, uh, and I'll, see, uh, I'll see about doing that video for you guys. All right, appreciate it.